Hello. Happy Christmas. Uh, welcome to the Love Spoon Workshop. And welcome to our final live stream of 2020. So yeah, we'll be in the new year when we're doing our next live stream. So hopefully everything is okay. I can see we're on screen there. Uh, yeah, this live stream, uh, as you may guess from the title, is to do with carving things like text, um, maybe letters, numbers, whatever basically, using, so it's to, to scroll saw, not carving, to scroll saw any sort of text. Reason I've done this one, this was, let me get this right, Ain't no plan. We had a message. Um, hello to you. Ain't no plan. Uh, asking us about scroll saw in text. So uh, this was this is our example we used for the photo. So I'm going to demonstrate how we actually do that. So you start off. You pick your font. You can basically go on things like. I mean, I use. Uh, Office, you've got Microsoft Word, those sorts of things. You know, you you you've got the different text formats on Lightroom, Photoshop, wherever you get it from. You know, you know the sort of thing. Google fonts, everything like that. So you you get your text, um, and you you can print it off, and then I I sort of drew, I've redrawn it. So I picked this particular font. I should have checked what it actually is, but what I've actually done. Um, when I when I saw the original, the T was separate from the other letters. Okay, so they, there was actually a big gap between the T and the EXT. So to give it extra strength and to just make it better all round, what I did, I moved the T so it's touching the final T and the E as well. So I closed all the gaps so you can make it then more of a solid um, carving. So to go through the process of how we uh, do text then, you can draw it out on paper. As we mentioned in some of our other live streams and some of our other videos, the other method that you can do is to actually glue the piece of paper to the wood itself. But there, there are no sort of rules or regs. Do it however suits you. You then get a piece of carbon paper and you trace around the design trace around that design using carbon paper. So that's the process of getting the design onto the wood itself. What I've done for this demonstration then, I've already traced it on like so. So you can see that is what we're going to actually demonstrate for you all to see is cutting out this one here. Um, I've chosen a piece of mahogany because it's a darker wood, darker wood colour. And um, I'm going to use a background. That one there, that is actually just a, a piece of, it's just a piece of pine that I had lying around. But the reason I've done that is because we've got a pale background. So it's going to contrast. You're going to have that darker text on that lighter background. So there we are. We get straight into it and I will demonstrate um, how we're going to do it. Now the first thing that we've got to do, I've got a block of wood here because we've got to drill our holes. So I'm going to drill our holes. Now I don't like doing this on the scroll saw base because you can go you can go into the base, but I've got a fairly thick piece of wood and this basically I'm going to use it then to drill the holes, the pilot holes that we will use for doing our pierce cuts. So I'll just do those two minutes. But then, Push it away a bit on the top. Yeah, Dad, Dad's here as well. Hello, Thomas Woodcarver. You know. So yeah, uh, he's just pointing out that I'm not quite doing it. That's better. That's better. Happy. He's just checking that I've got it level, that I've got it square. We normally use a. We sand. would use a pillar drill. Yeah. So. The advantage of using a pillar drill for for doing this is um, basically, uh, it, it's it's square, so you're not worried about it. Is that about square, dude? Yeah. Happy with that? There we are. So, we finished with the drill. So I'll hand that one over to that on the bench. So we've done then our internal cuts. Um, I'll get rid of that block as well, the less things that we have 
as we're working on the scroll saw, so what tends to happen, everything with the vibration, everything starts to, to fall off. So yeah, what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off doing our pierce work, doing those internal cuts. And then afterwards, oh, we've got a few people joining us. Yeah, good. Yelly says everything's okay. Tommy's Workshop, hello. And Midnight Joker, good evening. Hello everyone, glad to have you with us. Um, hopefully this will be useful. Just for you to know as well, if um, I'm, th I'm looking now, you were with us, I think, last week. So with yourselves, oh, oh hi, Tommy, and you're like, yeah, just saying hello to everyone as well. Brilliant. Uh, glad to have you with us. Yeah, what, what I will do, I will turn down the volume of that microphone when we're scroll soaring because that sound will come through. Now, other little pointers then, as always, um, I've sanded the back, but you'll notice that it's rocking and rolling. So if you've got a piece of sandpaper that did, that did the reason that it's doing that uh, is where we drilled those holes, it'll just start rocking and rolling a little bit because of those holes where it breaks through. I noticed that actually, I just wondered what it was. Uh, yeah, so, so where we've drilled those holes through, um, that was causing it just to rock and roll. So yet yeah, now that's lying flat on the bed. Another um, query I had, it was actually on Reddit, uh, somebody was talking about blade tension, because we did a video for beginners. Um, and Oh, we've got Sketchy Pumpkin with us. Hello, good to have you with us as well. Brilliant, glad you can all join us. Um, we did a, a video last week where we were helping beginners out with blade tension, and somebody was saying, why didn't you give any advice on how to set blade tension well, what it is, there's so many different scroll saws out there and they're all different systems for doing it. What we've demonstrated before is you can put the tension on the machine and you can listen to the sound. But again, you'll get a different sound depending on the thickness of your blades, the machine you're working with. There's so many factors that come into it. So the main thing when it comes to like blade tension, have a look in the manual consult the manufacturer, and it's a little bit of trial and error. When it comes to blade tension, what you basically want is enough tension that you're not snapping your blades, and that it's not slack, that, that it's performing at its best. And the actual location, but it's, the location of the top. Yeah, the, in this machine, you know. that's right, in this machine, basically, excuse the telephone in the background, on this machine, on the Hegnet, yeah, you, you'll see the recess you want to basically get it to the top, as close to being at the top of the, of the blade holder as possible. This one here as well, the Hegner do, I don't like that, that's a new one. We'll put an adapter on it, it's really abrasive in your hand, it tends to rip the hand up a little bit. There we are, good to have you all with us. Let's get scroll sawing, let's do some work. I'm just going to turn this microphone down. I've shouted a bit louder, so hopefully you can still hear me. And what I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to do our internal cuts to get us started. As always, safety precaution stuff. We've got our mask and we've got our ear defenders. As we're doing this as well, any questions, feel free to ask them and we do our best to help you out with anything you want to know about.
Okay. I'm just going to... Yeah, we're just going to... Oh, excuse me. Sorry if that was a bit loud. Um, yeah, just going to stop there a second. I'll tell you why. Uh, it's just pointing out little things. Now, when we just came around the edge here, we went quite tight. We went quite close on that line there. So what I'm going to do is to just... Um, to just give us a little bit more strength on that part there. When I go through here, I will try my best just to come a little bit further on the edge there. So that's, that's just something that we're gonna have a little look at. So we've got this final internal cut, and then we're gonna go all around the outside there. Did you? Uh... No, it was only the phone line. So... No problem. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna work on that one there. Um, it's just that line there. It's a little bit thinner than I would like, so we're gonna, we're gonna try and strengthen that up a little bit. Any questions as well, as I said, about the techniques, the method we're using, get them into us. We do our best to help. I'll finish this one off and we'll, okay. uh, we'll get on to that. So yeah, wood. Um, well, the thing is with wood, we're we're always um, we're always sort of on the lookout for wood. Now, last week, excuse me, we were very fortunate that um, a friend of ours from Llanelli, he he brought us in uh, some mahogany things like doors, uh, window frames, door frames from um, a double glazing company that, and it's all stuff that nobody wants. So this one here is a Please piece of... Why you don't need, because people are putting plastic yeah, windows and That's doors. right. So, so things get replaced with plastic and things like that. Nobody wants it. So it ends up being burnt or taken to landfill and things like that. Well, we can use it. So it's always worth finding links with, as we said, double glazing companies, um, 
commentary, joinery firms, whoever. This one then, it's, it's a piece of mahogany. And mahogany, there's so many different types. They tell us there's between two and 3,000 different types of it. Some of them are good for scroll sawing, for wood carving, for that sort of thing. Others are not so good. Um, we use oak, we use ash, we use sycamore, mainly hardwoods. Now in this video, I will be using a thin piece of um, softwood, just as a backing. But when it comes to the carving, which we also do then, the softwood isn't so suitable. Having said that, we have used things like juniper, which I suppose technically, you know, you, you could class it as, as a softwood. But it's, it's basically with the wood, what I always say, a lot of people start, if you're in America, they call it basswoods. Here in the UK, we call it flowering lime. But there's no rules or regs. A lot of people recommend that. I always sort of suggest, have a go, find a source of wood, just try, try different things. And obviously, each country will have a different... Well, then, yeah, so you've got Midnight Joker stops off in Llanelli every year on their, on their hol holidays in Wales. Do you, do you make it as far as West Wales, I want to know? We're, we're close to Temby. So yeah, do you make it, do you make it this, far this far? We're, we're, off the, uh, we're off the beaten track. That's, that's where the motorway ends. Yeah. We're out in the wilds. So there. Right, uh, what we do, we will finish off cutting around the outside there. I just stopped it there, just to explain something that I'm doing, um, just in case you think that I'm doing a terrible job in following the line. Um, it's something that I do, for instance now, there's the three of us um, here at the workshop who use the scroll saw, myself, Dad, and my, and my brother Matt. Now, um, I tend to scroll saw a little bit differently to Matt, for instance, because he tends to follow the line. i tell you what I'm actually doing. As I'm going along, I'm thinking, hmm, I'd like to add a little bit of extra strength to what I'm doing. So the reason I haven't followed the line here is I've added a little bit, I've thickened up that piece. 
Because I'm looking at it thinking, oh, I want a bit of extra strength there. And I'm doing the same here. It's not good practice. If I'd marked it out correctly in the first place, I wouldn't be doing it. But um, it's something when you're sort of working, if you're looking at something thinking, oh, I, I, I'm not happy with that, either remark it or, you know, I, I'm terrible, you know, from that point of view in terms of demonstrating because I improvise a little bit. Just check here as well. We've got a few. Uh, Wiseman's Bridge. Wiseman's Bridge. You're just yeah. down the road there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. About three or four miles from us. Well, Wiseman's Bridge was, um, it was underwater a couple of weeks back. So, yeah, it was completely flooded. Um, you've got Torture and Doctor. Yeah, all. Oh, well, the, the white cottage on the, on the waterfront of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's all the different things, see, that have been filmed in the area. Brilliant. Yeah, Wiseman's Bridge, you're very close. You're very For close to where we are. Everybody interested in history, of course, Wiseman's Bridge, and that was the place where they... They did um, the dress, like the rehearsals for the, the Dunkirk landings. The D-Day landing. Uh, was it Dunkirk? D-Day landings. D-Day landings, sorry. Yeah. There we are. Back warming up leftovers. Yeah, we've still got we've still got half a turkey and, our, and half a chicken left, haven't we? Well, it's not quite as bad as that. Oh, it's not, is it? No. We've still got a bit left there. Yeah. Right. right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around there. The other thing as well, worth pointing out, you, you notice this, this design of blower, um, we've got another machine um, in the back that we use, and it's got the purple blower on it, and it's, it's a better... It's a Actually, better one extend, than this. So yeah, it. this one it, it, it does yeah. move. It'll, it'll the, the tube will, it. will pull right a bit further. It yeah. But it's it's worth noting as well. We were talking last week with somebody who's having problems, that was Mark Huggins, where um there was the bellows had broken. We were saying to get it replaced. So you've got that blower doing its doing its job basically. Um asking it where are we then? Yeah, we're in Pembrokeshire. We're um, we're in Pembrokeshire. We're in a small hamlet called Cold Inn, um, and we're about five miles from Saundersfoot, so probably about six miles or so from um, six miles from six seven miles from Wiseman's Bridge. But oh, that, that's the right. closest place four to miles. us four, four miles, miles. Is it? The closest place to us is Kilgetty. So that's, that's where we're close to. There we are. We're going to carry on on this one here. As I said, any other questions?
Right, so let's turn up the volume there. Do we have any questions there? They had a tucked up in Tembi last year. Yeah, they did indeed. There's a bit yeah, of fishing. Fast, yeah? yeah, you'd see it going. You'd see it going. Um, you'd see it going up the road and think, things like that. They were doing all sorts of different things during the uh, the lockdown. Right, as you can see, then we've got our cutout of our text now. The reason I cut that piece there is if you put, basically, this is something that, that we do. I think it'll probably be better on this side here. It'll go flatter on it. If you put it on a light background, because you've got the contrast, because you've got the two colours, it, it basically, it highlights it much better. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to sand out, we've got some sandpaper there to sand out the lines. So just so you can see how we would sort of finish this off. Here, no, because they are quite delicate. That's right. Yeah. Um, so that the truth is, is that it would be easier. We would we put it on the sanding machine. I would put it on the sanding machine. Exactly that to get rid of so those I lines. Yeah. So that's probably. Our best. They are coming off fairly well there. But it's just to give you an idea of how we would take out all of those lines. Let's just turn it around. Carry on just sanding it a little bit. And then we'll add a coat of shellac just to see. I know you've mentioned this mahogany. I think this is the, is this the Brazilian? Um, it's certainly of that sort of standard because the Brazilian mahogany is a really... Um, this, this machine, this, um, sorry, just notice we got a question on there about the machine. Yeah, this is a is a Hegner Multicut 2S. Um, it's, it's, a really it's a really nice machine to work with. If you get it set up correctly, you don't get a lot of vibration on it. Um, on the throat, what is it, about 18 inches there? The from top to bottom. No, the distance from the. Oh, sorry, the the back. The, yeah, it's something. Yeah, around that. Yeah, it's it's ideal. We we're mainly because we're mainly doing love spoons. It's ideal for for what we're doing. Um, when it comes to the blade, then most of what we're cutting out is less than an inch thick. So we use a Nikwa reverse tooth blade. And what the reverse tooth blade does, it means you're cutting on the upstroke and you're cutting on the downstroke as well. So it tends to clear, it clears the, um, yeah, there's a blade, the dust. Have you got a blade there, Dave? Yeah, we've got a blade just Show there. Show the blade at the end so you can see the, the teeth going. That's right, you've got six teeth. You've got six teeth going the, the, the opposite way. So that's what you get with the reverse tooth blade. So it's a really good machine. A lot of people say about the price and things like that. Um, but we bought two of these, and they they are less. They're less than a. They're still less than a thousand pounds, I believe, to buy one of these. Yeah, they run about the five hundred pound mark. Right. This particular one. Um, the, the this one here, and to give you an idea, we've owned both of our scroll saws for sort of ten, fifteen years, and they're still both doing a really good job for us. I just refocused it. Now that one there, I, the reason I haven't sanded that too much is that it's quite delicate, so we're not going to mess about with that too much. Right, so you can all see. What I would do here, so this is, is one method for doing text. What I would do is to do a few little dabs. You can see, if I was going to sort this out properly, I would take all of these, you know, where you can see with the cuts, we would put that on the belt sander to finish it off to take off all of this sort of jagged edge, all of where the saw, you know, these little bits here, we would put that on. Yeah, you're on not gonna glue that one on, are you tonight? Um, yeah, we, we, we'd just are glue it sure? down just, oh, to, okay. just to demonstrate. Yeah, there we are, just so everybody can see how it would be finished. So we got one like that, one like that, and one like that. So we oh, just I put- I think we got one in the corner of that one as well. Three little, three little dabs on there. Yeah, yeah we, we, I would do that, but I, I won't worry just for the demonstration okay. here. So what we're going to do, you pick a position, and I mean this this now using text is a great way, you know, for your scroll saw projects, for all of your projects, it's a great way of sort of making it 
a little bit more... You've got to keep the pressure on it. For more it. interesting. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hold it down, keep that pressure on it. I usually come to 20, but Dale has to come to 10 twice. That's right. So I'm going to count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There you go. So we count it to 10 twice. And then we hope it's stuck. And so hopefully, yeah, that that is stuck down. Now all I'm going to do, let's just have a little dab. We have a little bit of shellac just to finish it off for everyone to see. What we're also planning on doing in, in the new year, and a, and a happy new year to everyone, and let's, let's hope it's a, a healthy and productive one for us, for us, for everyone, for, for us all. Um, one of the videos that I'm planning on doing is to show different methods of doing text on on a scroll saw because there are a few different ways you can go about it but this was a, a special request from ain't no plan so hopefully you'll get you'll get around to seeing this one and um it's one method that you could consider using oh yeah it's a marvelous product that you're using though the shellac yeah the shellac brings up the character the shellac from cardiff and uh it's a super project, it's a super product. It really is, yeah. One thing we have noticed though is that it, it does seem to be going up in price, doesn't yes. it? Yes, it is. Quite considerably. Yeah. But I think it's just the circumstances that we all find ourselves in. There we are. So that is a, a method that you can consider using. What about the blue feeder job? I thought you'd prepared just, one earlier. Yeah, we have. We'll show that one again. I got one, this brush. We're in need of a new brush. Just check that we haven't. Oh, uh, what do we got there? Do you ever carve a bevel on the edge of your letters? Yes, I do. If I was, if I was going to, if somebody asked me to do this one, and when I've done plaques and things like that before, what I, what I would, act, what I've done, and this is, as I said, we'll demonstrate this in a, in another video. Um, I would actually do this on the scroll saw. Basically what it is on this video, I thought we'd just do scroll saw, but if you were asking me my preference, I would now like to carve a little bit of separation there, so separating the T and the E, a little bit there, and then I would shape all of the edges just to round it all off as yeah. part of the finish. And you do so that I, when you're doing text on your love spoon. We do, yeah. yeah. So when we're doing it on the love spoon, yeah, we, we always, it. yeah, it, 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 it just softens that sort of hard edge that we've got on this one. That was, it was basically, because it was a request for only, um, for only having, you know, a method with the scroll saw. That's what I demonstrated. But that would be my preference, would be just to put a little bit of separation on the letters. And then, as you said, to put a bevel on it. That would be my preferred finish. But there we are. Hopefully, that gives you a, an idea, a method. I'll just refocus in on, on there. A method, a technique that you could consider using for, for doing text. And it's great. You, I, I see it very popular on the, the different sort of scroll soaring forums and things like that. Um, especially I see in America, like the baseball teams, they have the text, you know, the name of the team. And you can build it up then, your, your plaque in, in layers. There we are. Hopefully that's useful. Just a simple technique. As I mentioned, we will be doing a dedicated video where we highlight some other techniques. Um, I think everything has gone up. Yeah, you're spot on saying about the prices of everything in the last nine months. It definitely, everything's going in price because I think the supply chain has been affected and things like that. There we are. Hopefully that's useful. Thank you all for joining us again. As always, we'll be back again soon with more videos. And I wish you all a happy new year.